In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this wavy number seven animation I created for 36 days of type. We'll be setting this up parametrically so you can easily update this for any letter, number, font or logo. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a tutorial for any of my other letters from this year's 36 days of type. Please remember to like and subscribe and you'll get notifications of when I upload new videos. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's just start by setting up the project settings. So, um, We'll go to our project settings. I just want to set this to be 25 frames per second and 100 frames. So this is going to be a four second loop. Um, we're next going to get a, a MoGraph Mo text. Make that number seven. So it's kind of like my 36 days of type, the number seven I did. We're going to copy that. And we're going to make that the Big John font. Now this could be any font you wanted. It doesn't necessarily have to be this one. Um, in this case, so I'm making it 40 uh, is the depth. Um, and that will work out for this setup. But obviously, you can adjust if uh, if you want to make it different. But if you want to follow along, just make this 40. And then we're going to offset this by minus 20. So we had the uh, the zero it is kind of sitting down. The center line is sitting down the center of the, the number. Okay. And the first thing I'm going to do then is create an instance of that object. And this is just so that down the line we can update this to be any letter or number that we want. So I'll group that and hide that, hide our object. So that's our kind of um, our original object. And th the next thing I'll do is just create the kind of scaffolding shape I had around the edge. Uh, and to do that is kind of simple. It's just an atom array. We'll put our text into the atom array. And then I'm just going to make this four by four. So that gives us that kind of scaffolding shape. And um, I'm going to put that into a volume builder and volume mesher. Uh, and that's just so it kind of gives it kind of more of a gelatinous kind of shape. Um, so when we put the material on down the line, it kind of suits that kind of jelliness. So I'm going to add in a voxel size of one and then put in a smooth layer. And I'm going to change that to one as well. So that just kind of smooths out. If you look on here, you know, it smooths out those edges, makes it a nice kind of single form. And you can already see if we go up to the our Mo text object, how we can, how this will mean we can procedurally update everything because we can just swap that out and down the line it will change everything. So let's change that back to seven. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is just make a copy of that instance. Oh, I made a copy of everything. Let's make a copy of this. And I'm going to hide the uh, that kind of scaffolding shape for the moment. And that's just, I'm going to call that scaffold. Uh, and that's just so we can concentrate on doing this kind of shape in the middle. And we'll add that in down the line and then add the materials. So what we're going to do next is create the, the wavy shapes that we're then going to use to um, break up this, this number. So we go in the front view and what I'm going to actually get is a um, formula object that's up here. Now the formula object uses this formula to kind of create these different wavy shapes. And I think if you put different formulas in here, you can get all different crazy, um, crazy lines. But we just want something very simple. We just want this up and down wave. We just want it to be a lot smoother and not as uh, abrupt as this is. So. The settings I'm going to change on here, here where it says 100.0, I'm going to change that to 25. So we just get a kind of a, a softer um, wave. Uh, this T minimum, and I guess this maximum, I'm going to make the minimum zero. Actually, you could have it as minus one. It gives you some extra space. Uh, and then the maximum, I'm going to make that five. And then the samples, obviously, we haven't got a very smooth shape. So I'm going to update that to... 200. So there's our formula object. Now I'm going to set the Y on that to zero. So this is going to be our initial one. And then I'm going to duplicate that a few times, four times in fact, and then change the Y's on each of these. So I'm going to make 150, one, 150. Oh, sorry. I'll make that one 100. And then this one, 150. Okay, and then I'm going to group all those objects and we'll call that lines. 
So this is our um, wavy lines that we're going to kind of move through our object. Okay, so with our timeline and our line selected and the coordinates on the first frame of the X, I'm going to make a keyframe and then on frame 100, move this along to minus 200. And if you see our wave, you'll see on our first and last frame, our wave here is in the same place. So we know that this is going to loop. What we'll have to do, so I'll just go into the, the uh, timeline. I'm just going to set the keyframes to linear so that our, we've got this linear animation moving for our object. So what we'll do now is just put these together in a uh, volume builder, get our volume mesher add the builder to the mesher and then we'll add the lines into the builder and you'll see straight away that it's actually creating volume from these lines. Now when you put um, any uh, splines within a volume builder it actually creates circles along the length of that spline like spheres sorry to make up the density. So if I put this voxel size down to one you can see we've got this kind of caterpillar shape um, where all these spheres are kind of put together. So if I in the volume builder click on the lines you see we've got a density of uh, 0 0.1 right, so if I put that up to 1 see now we've got a, a lot smoother line uh, for this I'm going to change the radius to 18 and then I'm going to add our mode text instance into here put that underneath and then I'm going to subtract the lines from the mode text now obviously this not looking quite right. Okay. Now this is just cutting out holes out of the uh, seven for now, um, but because we're going to add smoothing on, we're actually going to break this up a bit. So if I add a smooth layer into here, you can see now we've got that um, those shapes that are created um, in the in the render that you saw at the beginning. Okay, now it's running pretty slow because obviously we've got an animated mesh and we've got a voxel size of one. So I'm just gonna for the minute just put this up to something like five. And I'm actually going to take the smooth layer off because I'm going to show you a, a neat trick later on where you can update the smoothing on everything at once. So I'm going to name this one um, main and then I'm going to duplicate this four times to create the the stripes that run through it so one two three four and I'll, I'll actually they're already named so under the lines we'll just delete um, the other three so for each set we just have one so for that we'll keep formula for this we'll just keep formula one for this one we'll keep formula two and then for this one, we'll keep formula free. Okay. Right. And then for each of these, we just need to uh, change the way that these are reacting to each other rather than being subtract. We want this to be intersect. To intersect. Intersect. And intersect. Okay. So now we've got these um, the, the bits in the middle and then the main one on the outside so we run through you can see that that is working but obviously still looking rough at the moment but just to show you again if we go up to our mode text here we could just change this to another number and everything's updated and we know that everything is going to loop okay so let's just put this back to seven and what I'm going to do is we can turn on our scaffold which goes on the outside And can't we see? Oh, for some reason I'd remove that from there. Okay, so there we go. No, we don't want to take that one. We want to take the instance. Okay, and then each of these I want to, um, we want to update the voxel size. I'm going to change this to one. Okay, so that smooths everything out on each of those. I want that 
to be one as well. Okay, now obviously it's just cutting out those holes because everything's uh, we want to smooth everything out. So the way to smooth that out, we'll go up to volume and we're going to get this smooth filter. So this smooth filter is a way where you can update just one and drag it in. So let, let's just show you here. If we just open each of these up, you can just drag our smooth filter. If we go to, sorry, the volume builder, we're not dragging it into this hierarchy. We're actually dragging it down here. So it works the same way as a smooth filter here, where it's an external one rather than being actually in the volume builder. So if we just drag that into each one, pick the volume builder, drag it in. Drag that in. So we've just got our final one to do. Oh, I keep trying to do it myself. Just remember, you're dragging it into here, not into the, not into this hierarchy, to this. So now we've got see these smooth edges, but with this smooth filter now, you can update, and it will update all of them rather than just updating the one. And now with our mode text again, we've just changed this to another letter should be able to see there you go our animation is going to update for everything so you could do this for a whole bunch of letters okay let's just put this back to seven we know our animation loops because we tested that originally with our lines so what we'll do next is to set this up for with the uh, materials actually i'll put this back down to two i think that's the setting i had Okay, so now I'm going to get into setting up for Octane. So I've got the same scene. All I've just brought in is this studio background, um, which is just um, a line object that I've then extruded out uh, to give us like a curve. Uh, and I've brought in an Octane sky. And for that, I'm just using an image texture. For me, it's this Car Studio 2, uh, which I got from um, the Pixel Lab. Okay, so that's all I've done. So uh, let's open up the Octane Live Viewer and drag this over um, we want to put this onto path tracing and I actually want to probably change my setup slightly because I want this to be my Instagram size which is 1000 by 1250 and we want to make sure that we're set at 25 frames per second um, and we want to render from frame 0 to frame 99 that's what I'll eventually render as so that because frame 100 and 0 are the same because we've got our perfect loop Okay, so if we press the render button, we'll see what that's looking like. Okay, uh, if we hold the um, padlock down, then this that shows us what um, what our full view is, and we can kind of move that around. If we view it at one, that's full size. So if I just put this back to 0.5, and we what we haven't got is actually an octane camera. So select an octane camera, and then we'll zoom in. And I want to change the the uh, focal length on this to tele 135. Okay, so we get that kind of more isometric -y sort of view. Okay, now um, we can probably add in some materials and then change. What I'm going to also do is change some of the camera settings. So uh, first we'll add in the materials. So this background that I've just put, brought in is just a glossy material with a uh, diffuse of uh, this HSV 2844296. That's it. Very simple. Um, we're going to create the yellow material and then we've got the two like jelly-like materials. So let's create a octane glossy and this is going to be the yellow. And all this one has is a diffuse. I've written down the colors of uh, 35 100 100 so very simple material and then we'll drag that on to our main okay everything's looking very dark at the minute compared to uh, how it is in the final render but we're going to change that with the camera settings uh, and then we've got our two jelly materials we've kind of got a, a red and a slightly yellowy one so um, let's go to materials again we'll create a specular we'll call this one red jelly um, and then the roughness, we're going to do 0 0.1. So just adding a sort of an, a bit of roughness to it. And that gives it that kind of jelly look to it. And then under medium, we're going to add a scattering medium. And then under there, we change absorption to an RGB uh, spectrum. So this is basically, we can set the color 
uh, of the absorption on there. So for this one, we're going to change this to under HSVC again. Oh, sorry, HSV again. We'll change this to 29. 195 so we're kind of using a similar orange color but when it comes out through the uh, scattering medium it kind of comes out as this red so let's um, drag that onto a couple of these I want to offset them so we're on a red and a red and then a yellow and a yellow and you see that's super dark at the moment and that's because under the medium you can change this density at the minute it's very dense so it's very thick so the light doesn't get through it so we're going to change this down to something like 10 See, now you can see that that light is actually creeping in. You can get even light. If we went down to one, see it's practically clear. Let's go to 10. Um, and then I'm gonna duplicate that. And we'll call this one yellow. Jelly. Same settings on this one, but in the scattering medium, we're gonna change this color, the BHSV. So we're gonna change this to 47 by 73 by 95 okay we'll leave that as is okay so now we've, see we've got this yellow tint so we're going to drag that on to the other two so now see we've got the yellow and the red now we haven't got any lights in here at the moment so we're going to add in some lights and then change those camera settings actually we'll make the scaffold shape on the outside that yellow that red jelly sort of material as well so the thinner the object, the more light can pass through with these scattering mediums. So these denser objects are a lot darker. Now we've done that, let's um, go to the camera. We're going to adjust a couple of these settings. Under the camera imager, let's turn that on. And what I did to get the setting that you can see in the final render is I actually up upped the exposure and the gamma. So for this, I updated the exposure to something like 1.8 and the gamma to 1.5. See, now we're getting these nice bright colors. So there's our view. Uh, now you could add some roughness onto the yellow, I guess, and you can see in other tutorials where I do that. We could add a couple of lights in. Let's make sure we've not got anything selected. Then go to objects, lights, and we're gonna create an octane targeted area light, which creates this target that the light points at. So we'll just have that in the center, and then we can move our octane light around. So it'd be easier if we go to another view. And then maybe we'll put a light over here. We'll just turn this right down. Just pick up a little bit. I like to have a light on the left and on the right. Maybe a little bit behind. I think if it's a bit behind, it can kind of pick up the light on the edge. So there you go. So I think that's probably something I'm now happy with. And now I could probably set that to render out. Uh, the, and the beauty of using our um, instance is that now we could change this letter to, let's say, like A or any other number, and it's going to update everything for us. We've got a full animation. I guess the one thing you could do now is just uh, update your settings. For something like this, I would probably go like a thousand on my samples, put these both down to 10. This between 1 and 10, you could probably set this to 1. Um, and then I would turn on adaptive sampling and that just helps speed up our render. So for the minute, this is half size, it's going to take about 30 seconds to do a frame. Um, double the size, it would probably take longer to be honest with you. Um, if you want any other tips on like workflow and actually when it comes to rendering and uploading to Instagram, um, you can view this tutorial I did previously and that will give you all the info on that. I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and check out some of my other tutorials. If there's anything on my Instagram feed you'd like me to show the process of, please let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Please stay safe. Bye.